the girl in the spider web yes a very interesting timeline these movies have and i'll definitely be making a video talking about this because i think it's something that needs to be talked about and dissected because it can get pretty confusing with all these different girls the girl who kicked the hornet's nest the girl who played with fire the girl with the giant tattoo the girl in the spider webs and the upcoming the girl an eye for an eye so this movie is basically a sequel to the swedish trilogy that ended with the girl who kicked the hornet's nest so this movie picks up right after that one but this is a time jump because this is the American version from the remake of The Girl with the Giant Tattoo. We saw with David Fincher, Daniel Craig, and Rumi Mara. And then this also has a whole new set of cast to it. Very confusing. I'm sorry. But I just had to address that right now before we get into it. So this one is directed by Fetty Alvarez and it has Claire Foy as The Girl with the Giant Tattoo. So the girl in the spider web starts with Elizabeth Salaman, Salander's past with her sister Camila and their father who is nothing less of a creep and as Elizabeth put its best, a pig. We then time jump to see Elizabeth escape and jump forward to the present time where we see her as a grown up Elizabeth that we know from the series and as the infamous hackers that is presented with a new job. A man who developed a system that can hack all the nukes in the world and you'll be able to pretty much detonize them at any time so pretty much you're playing God with this software wants the system back after he created it and who has it? The NSA. So she does this with ease but things go all types of wrong. The system is taken from her after and she's left to die and the man who invented this software is taken into a safe house with his son because he is the only one that can decrypt this and then on top of all of this you have the top security guy from the NSA going after her Nehem and trying to get back that software and Lisbeth has to now recruit Blumkis everybody's favorite journalist to help her uncover the secret organization that took the software so now you got a whole spiderweb thing going on but this isn't the girl who's in the spiderweb so after some digging, they both realize that the organization known as the Spiders, this is where spider Web comes into play, is that of Lisbeth's father now being run by her sister Camila, who she says died three years ago, but in fact she is still out there and pretty spiteful towards Lisbeth, we'll get into that later. But by the time they realize all of this, it's too late. They have already killed the creator of the software and abducted his son, and now they're trying to get the password for it, and who knows what the hell they're trying to do with it, right? So... It's now up to Lisbeth, her hacker friend, Bloomkiss, and the American Meham to team up and take the software back. Sorry, I don't know why I said Meham. Meham. To take the software back and get the boy back to safety to his mother back in the States. Through twists and turns, we find out the Swedish government had something to do with wanting the software as well to take it away from the American hands. And then the spiders were helping them do this for some money. Then when it all comes to the end to do the deal to exchange everything, the spiders are like, you know what? We're going to keep it for ourselves, actually. Kill all of the Swedish people that were involved in this in the government and let's get the hell out of here. But in the end, we see a confrontation between Lisbeth's team, Camila's team, and then we see a final showdown between both sisters. And this pretty much was L Camila explaining how can Lisbeth go all of her life saving countless of women from all these men that hurt her, but she never bothered to go back for her sister, who she knew that her father was very much a monster and was hurting her night after night, and she just pretty much was like, ah, whatever, block it on my mind. So this was supposed to be some emotional confrontation. I felt nothing, but nonetheless, let's get into what happens next. We see Camila jump to her death, throw the software to the ground. It's pointless. She doesn't care anymore. The boy is saved. The program has been erased for no one to use. Bloomkiss has moved on from Lisbeth. The security guy goes back to the United States and Lisbeth burns down the childhood home of her and Camilla and their monster father, rides off into the abyss into her next chapter, possibly closing this story until you remember there's a fifth book to do another snooze festival of a movie on. Now, I might sound like a hater and everything like that, but trust me, I saw the original trilogy from the Swedish side of things when it first came out. I love that series. I think it's one of the best well put together series. I can see how it can become sort of a bore at times during certain scenes in that series, but overall a good trilogy I might say. The American remake with David Fincher, I love David Fincher, that's all you gotta know and you realize what my position is with that movie. But when it comes to this movie, I was looking forward to so much from this movie. You had Fetty Alvarez, who I thought did a tremendous job with his movies, The Evil Dead, and also Don't Breathe. And then I'm thinking, this man is going to knock it out of the park. This is such a dark and gritty story to tell, so let's get to it. And all the elements were there to make this a great movie. I thought the actors were pretty great. I'm not too sure about Camila's act 
actress. But I was pretty excited to see everybody involved in this. The Keith Stanfield is a pretty great actor, Claire Foy as well. And then the dialogue was just not there, I believe. I think that the script was really feeling empty and shallow and they were going more for style over substance because the style in this movie is pretty awesome. It's pretty dark and it's pretty um, like stylistic. And I think that's something that they were trying to imitate from David Fincher's but they still left out the storytelling that is supposed to be there. And I think that goes a lot with having to get somebody who was able to write this movie really, really well. Because you can have that vision, but that vision can feel pretty shallow and hollow. And that's exactly what happens with the girl in the spider's nest. So pretty much by the end of it, Lisbeth has moved on. Camila seems to be dead, but we're not too sure. There's another book out there, so we're pretty sure that she might not be dead because that book deals with Elizabeth's past and all of that. So pretty much we're setting up for a sequel, depending on how much of this money this movie makes. It's not looking to make that much money, I believe. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. So a sequel is definitely happening if it makes enough money. And if it doesn't, then we can never forget about this trilogy, this series, whatever, until another remake comes, of course. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on the movie. Did you like it? Did you not? Apparently, at the end, the key to it all was this kid who knew, like, a lot about decrypting codes and all of this. And ultimately, Elizabeth saw herself in this kid. She ultimately wanted this kid to be safe. She wanted this kid to have the hope that she might have not had when she was his age. And pretty much, it turned out okay, I guess, except the kid's father died and all of that. So, I don't know. Very interesting movie. A lot of very... Um, it was entertaining for the most part. Some parts were very snoozy, as I said. But for the most part, I do give it a 60 as it's given on Rotten Tomatoes. Definitely check it out at a matinee or on Redbox. Don't flesh out $10 for this, my friends. But anyways, what are your thoughts? Let me know below. Are you excited to see a sequel for this? Or do you think this series should just be laid down for now and give it some rest and then pump it back up in a couple of years? Let me know your thoughts. Anyways, as always, 6,000 subscribers. Let's get to it. I'll see you all next time. Stay positive.